So today we're going to talk about a book titled One Witch Too Few. This book is um, a kind of paranormal fantasy uh, book. Falls along in a cozy, I would call it a cozy mystery. Uh, you meet your main female character uh, in her Winnebago as she is being attacked by another witch who she manages to escape from um, and decides that she's going to go the only place she knows she will be safe, which is a shifter's house. A friend of hers who she's been friends with since she was a child, but apparently they've been estranged for seven years. Uh, something to do with her mom gaining a higher position and then moving and him getting into some trouble and so she shows up at his house and they basically are able to reconcile and get their their air their issues with each other what had been going on um and reconnect and then she tells him that she feels like while everyone else believes that her mother is dead she doesn't think so um her mother supposedly died and left this will uh and left her almost nothing except a hunk of metal and um a business card to a place that she's never heard of before and <clears throat> her mother was big into puzzles and figuring things out and so she she tells him that she thinks that this is something her mother has done for her uh to have her f try and find her and that she's in trouble um and he believes her without any question if she says that her mom is alive then he believes that her mom is alive and he's gonna go help her uh so they contact her mom's accountant who's also a close friend of the family uh, and they meet up with him at a bar where he uh tell and he's the one who gave her the winnebago um and this is revealed as, as she's talking to him um because he felt bad for her that she didn't really get anything um, and she tells him that she, you know, reiterates to him she thinks her mom is alive. And he tells her that he's, you know, he's very doubtful. And so she shows him the card and she explains, you know, what she thinks. And it's only then that he decides that maybe there's something to what she is saying. And he goes ahead and agrees that she's, that, that her mom is alive and sends her, um, to this this place in Canada. So it's all the way in Canada. They're driving from down south in America all the way up to Canada. So then we get a road trip and we get where they get to stop and park the RV and she won't let him drive. It's it's a control thing. It, it, she feels more out of control in her life right now than she does any other, than she has any other time before and being able to drive gives her a sense of control, right? And so she drives and, and he plans out their trip and he's the navigator and, and they get parked at this, you know, RV park and they go to the, on this little hike to the lake and, and it's really sweet and there's, um, it's, it's like a solstice or something and, and, uh, he, there's a group of witches, you know, a coven that's there and he goes over and asks them for a candle and lights a candle and, um, while all this is going on, there's a dark shadow that seems to be following her. It, it attacks her uh, in the Winnebago when she's, uh, before she's ready to leave to go to Canada. And it appears again from the candle when she lights the candle for her mom. Uh, I picked up pretty early on that this dark figure was her mom trying to contact her, uh, which is revealed at the uh, end of the book that this is her, her mom, her magic is being closed off and this is the only way she can get through. Uh, but so they make it to this club and it's one of those places where if you didn't know it existed and you didn't have the business card, you would never be able to find it because it's magical, right? And so they get in there and they're, and they're looking around and they're trying to kind of figure things out and uh, they're not real sure about what's going on, right? And so <clears throat> they find that there are these rooms and every hour it changes who gets to go into these rooms and so she walks up to the bartender with the business card and wants to speak to the owner manager you know and, and the bartender it tells her that they're going to go into the black door room right and so she goes in there and there's nobody in there um he had already informed them that the manager was out but would be back shortly and they were more than welcome to wait um, but she gets nosy and gets curious and she opens one of the desk drawers and finds this keychain and on this keychain is this metal piece that's broken that matches the metal piece in, that her mom had left her and when she reconnects them it actually gives her a name of a, a park, a national park. 
Uh, so she takes the whole key ring. Um, probably not the smartest thing for her to do, take the whole key ring, but she takes the whole key ring. Takes the whole key ring, takes off. They leave, right? Uh, they get to... <laughs> They get to this national park and they, well, first off, there's a big, huge battle in the club uh, because they, instead of waiting for the hour to be up and then stepping out of the room, like, what would make sense, they decide, oh, we have to get out of here right now. And I don't know if that was because they had taken the keychain and so now they were trying to escape, you know, with something that didn't belong to them, but it sets off all kinds of alarms and people start attacking them. Uh, at, at one point, a werewolf attacks, um, or a shifter attacks our shifter, and come to find out, this other shifter has magic, which, like, supposedly in this, in this world, shifters can't have magic, so it's one of those, like, oh, well, how is this possible, um, kind of things, right? And then they get to, they get to the cabin that this keychain had led them to, um, and they find a chest, and in this chest is another clue. Uh, but before they get a chance to kind of figure this clue out, they get attacked by the guys from the club. They have to fight them off. Um, this leads to uh, her shifter friend actually getting gravely injured. Um, and she kind of freaks out a little bit. Uh, and I don't want to give away, like, the whole part of the ending because there's a really cool twist uh, that kind of makes everything better. Uh, I would say, uh, but they have not yet found her mother, and I'm I'm pretty sure that that quest is going to continue in book two, which I cannot wait to read. I'm super excited. Uh, but I really thought this was a very fun kind of cozy paranormal mystery. Um, there's magic, and then there's a little bit of a subplot of romance, as, as we see as they're traveling in the Winnebago. Uh, they get closer and closer together, and you could tell that maybe if they had not been separated that they would have already been a couple and so now they're kind of you know he's kind of hitting on her and she's kind of flirting back and and they really seem to to be developing deeper feelings for each other which by the way in this world is taboo because shifters are like persona non grata and everybody looks down on them and they're not allowed in certain places so it's it's kind of interesting to see that her mom raised her, even though she was a witch, her mom raised her to not care about stuff like that, which was super cool. Um, so one witch, two for you. Check it out if you got a chance. And I'll see you next time.